In question 10, we are asked to use the extended credit card data to do some work with uh, the type column. So this data we've used in several of the lecture demonstrations already, but here we're going to focus just on the type column. So we've got 312 credit card products, all sorts of information about them, including the institution, the actual name of the institution, the card brand, the interest rate, but the last column type goes through and tells us whether it is a bank, a credit union or other institution. And so that's what we're going to be focusing on in this question. So for part A, we have to make a summary table of this particular column. And of course, a summary table will mean starting with a pivot table. So type is categorical. We've got banks, credit unions, other. If we click on cell A1, this will uh, is the best place to start for the pivot table because remember as we go through the pivot table process we want to make sure that it finds all of the data for us and so the top left hand cell is always where we begin. Now we can go to insert, select pivot table, just double check that it has indeed found the correct area of data it has. It's going from column A to column H. And in terms of where I'm going to put my pivot table, well, let's add it to the existing worksheet. So we'll just say where we're going to get it to start so that we can still see all the information as we proceed. So I say OK and Excel goes through, it creates our skeleton table and of course we have a field list over on the right where each of the columns are represented and we can therefore just use the one that we want which in this case is type. So I need to drag type into the row fields. Excel goes through and finds all the different categories. We have B for bank, C for credit union and O for other and then to actually count up those uh, categories we need to drag type once again into the data items area. Just double check that Excel has indeed counted remember sometimes it can use the other options such as summing so here we did want it to count so that we have the frequency and we can see from this summary table that there were the 312 credit card products, 133 came from banks, 147 from credit unions and the remaining 32 from other institutions. So if we wanted to use this table in a report we could certainly cut and paste it into our Word document. So that's part A. For part B we have to make a bar chart and of course once we've got the pivot table we can simply use the pivot chart button. Click on that, it brings up all the different types of charts. Now we could think about you know, a column or a bar, bar chart as Excel calls them, column being the vertical bars, bar chart being the horizontal bars. Doesn't really matter uh, for this case because we don't have particularly large label or category names. So I'm just going to choose the, the vertical, say OK. Excel makes that chart for me. Now I need to tidy it up a little bit. We don't need a legend because it's only one variable and it's not needed in the bar chart format. For the title, I can change that to something like credit card product providers. Now we've got B, C and O as the label corresponding to the original data. It'd be much nicer for it to say bank, credit union and other and we can do that by just going back to the pivot table and typing over those category labels. So Excel lets us manipul uh, manipulate the labels as easily as typing over them. So we've got banks, I'll make that plural, uh, actually let's make them singular, bank, credit union, other. And you can see that the, tape, uh, the chart updates as well. And then we've got our vertical axis, go into the, uh, well, click onto the chart, go into layout and we can add in a vertical axis. Now we can just use frequency, we could use number of entities, just so long as there's a label to make sure that it's clear that 
that's the information we're getting. So I'm just going to move that over to the side. That's quite a good chart. Certainly looking at that, we can see that credit unions are the largest providers of these credit card products, but that's uh, the figure is quite close to that of banks. Other has the smallest market share. Part C, we've got to do a pie chart. So we'll go back to our pivot table and click on it. And under options, we can find pivot chart once again. This time we'll make just a basic pie. Say OK. Just move that over so we can see it. Now here, of course, you do need your legend. So we know what color goes with which pie piece. You can add the percentages if you want to. And we've got several um, pre-designed chart layouts. So you can easily pick one of those. It moves the legend and puts the percentages on each pie piece. So that can be quite useful if you want it to be very clear. And certainly in this case, banks and credit unions are quite similar in size. So having those percentages written on the actual pie pieces means that we can easily work out that credit union is in fact larger than bank. And we would still need to fix up that title. And we can just use the same title as for the bar chart. Okay, so two quite nice charts. Now, in fact, part D asks us, which do you think gives the best representation of the data? And well, with three categories, certainly we could argue each way. If there were many categories, we would tend not to use a pie chart, but three categories a pie chart is appropriate. So is the bar chart. Now, it really just depends on which you think gives the better representation. Certainly, if we have a look at the bar chart, it is very obvious that credit union has the highest uh, level, so the highest frequency of products, and we can clearly see other is the smallest. With the pie chart, because banks and credit unions have similar numbers, we do have to look that little bit more carefully, but having the labels on the pie pieces helps with that. So here, uh, really personal preference as well as thinking about what you are wanting to say when you actually write up some analysis on this particular um, data. If you were going to talk about the actual frequencies, well then the bar chart might be the, the better choice. Whereas if you're going to make reference to those percentages, well then having the pie chart would be useful because it does lend itself very naturally to thinking about percentages or proportions rather than the actual frequencies. So there, you, for part D, you could argue both ways think in the end it just comes down to how you're going to present your written analysis. Okay, so part E, what are the key features? Well, we want to be able to tell the story of this data. And so we might say something like the credit card market is dominated by products from banks and credit unions, with credit unions providing overall the largest number of different credit card products with 47% of the cards. Other institutions do participate in the market, but supply only 10% of the cards.